Ben's from Mission, and today we're talking about pedal board power supplies, principally the difference between isolated and non-isolated supplies. Now rather than me just tell you that you should go out and buy an isolated supply because it sounds better, I'm going to prove it. We're going to connect up both isolated and non-isolated supplies. We're going to record the audio and listen to it back. We're going to run it through frequency analysis so we can see what the differences are. And I promise you that during this video you will clearly be able to hear and see the differences between isolated and non-isolated power supplies. After we're done, we'll go to the whiteboard and then we'll do a little explanation of why it is that we heard what we just heard and why using an isolated power supply fixes it. Now this is not a brand review. We're not going to be talking about why one make of power supply is better than another. We're really just going to be covering the differences between isolated and non-isolated. So for the isolated side of the house, we're going to be using the Mission 529 which has five isolated outputs. And then for the non-isolated side of the house, we have this AGP Tech Power. And this is a generic power supply that I just bought from Amazon for about 30 bucks. This one's branded AGP Tech, but there's quite a few different brands of the same device. I think Donna and K-Line and a few others, they all sell for about the same price. They all have the same features. They're essentially all the same supply. I'm sure they probably come out of the same factory and just have different branding. Now the interesting thing about this supply is that if you look on a lot of the advertisements on Amazon or eBay or wherever you might buy it, it's often advertised as an isolated power supply, but it isn't. And so one of the first things that I'll do is I'll show you how you can test to see whether you have an isolated or non-isolated supply. And then once we've done that, we'll run the tests We'll do the explanation and then we'll be done. Okay, ready? Let's go. Okay, here's our setup. We have two Pedal Train Nano pedal boards. The first one is a Strymon Mobius. This is going to be a high current digital device. And then we have a Sewer Riot and a Donna Square Reverb. And these are going to be our low current devices. Our second pedal board is slightly larger. We have an even tied mixing link, way huge Russian pickle, Pigtronics Quantum, and an even tied H9. For monitoring, we have a Marshall DSL 40C head, which is going into a Stagecraft 3x12 triangle cabinet, and I have a shotgun mic monitoring on, on axis on the top 12 inch driver, and that's going into a USB audio interface. For analysis, we want to both hear and see what's going on with these different power supplies. So we're running Audacity that's going to record the audio so that we can listen back to the different power supplies and see if we can hear the difference. And then we're running TrueRTA, which is going to do frequency sweeps, so that if we do have differences between them, we're going to find where those frequencies are that those power supplies may be generating noise, for example. Okay, before we start the test, let's measure these and prove whether they are or not isolated power supplies. We'll go into more detail exactly what we mean by isolated when we get to the whiteboard section, but really what we're looking for here in this test is to make sure that there's no common ground. We want to make sure that the positive and negative on each of the outputs is individual to the output and not shared with any of the others. Yep, okay, that's good. Let's measure, the, let's measure the actual resistance. Okay, so that's open circuit. So that's what we'd expect from an isolated power supply. Now bear in mind, this is advertised on Amazon where I bought it, and I think on eBay too, most of the advertisements say that this is an isolated power supply. Now in fairness, when you do buy one, when you get one and you open it up and you look inside the instruction manual, at least the one that came with this one, it didn't mention anything about it being isolated. But it's too late, I guess, once you've bought it. Anyway, let's, uh, let's, let's test it and see. So we'll do the same thing. We'll set it to continuity, and we'll test the two, uh, the two negatives. And then you can see we have continuity there, so those are connected. So those are not isolated. Those are the uh, 200 milliamp outs. Maybe those are common, and the higher um, K 
current outputs are isolated at least. So let's try that. Okay, so those are not isolated. There's a couple of uh, couple of high voltage or higher higher voltage, 12 and 18 volts outputs here. Maybe those are isolated from the lower voltage ones. What about at least the input? Maybe the input's isolated from the outputs. No, so they're all common ground, so that none of those are isolated from any others. Let's just measure what the actual resistance is, just to be sure. So I'm going to switch it to switch my multimeter to ohms, and we'll connect the uh, we'll connect them together again, yeah, and we'll measure what that is. Okay, that is uh, that's 0.4 of an ohm, so that's a dead short. That's that's just measuring the resistance of the two cables here. So that is not an isolated power supply. Okay, well that's not good if you bought one expecting an isolated power supply, but it's good for us because we need to be able to compare the two. So let's do that. Okay, test number one. Let's start with the um, isolated power supply. So we have the isolated power supply is the Mission 529, powered by an APC rechargeable lithium ion battery. We have the 500 milliamp output is connected to the Mobius and then two of the 150 milliamps are connected to the Riot and the Donner. And let's turn the battery on so we power it up. Make sure everything comes up okay. Okay, let's get started with test number one. This is pedal board one with the isolated power supply. We're going into the clean channel of the Marshall I have 50% gain and 50% volume, and we'll leave those set there so that it's the same level between all the different tests, and then I'll just switch the amp on and off using the standby. If the camera mic doesn't pick up the, the audio, we'll record it into Audacity here so that we can hear it back afterwards, and we'll also do a frequency analysis on it so we can do a direct comparison. All right, I'm gonna turn the amp on, start the test, and I'll go quiet for 20 seconds or so while we do the samples. All right, test number one, pedal board one, isolated. Okay, I'll save those and then we'll get started with the next test. Okay, for test two, we're keeping the same pedal board. So the Strymon and the two low current devices. And all I've done is I've switched out the 529 isolated power supply for the AGP Tech unisolated power supply right here. It comes with a little 18 volt wall wall to power it. So I'm gonna plug that in and that should power up the pedal board. Okay, there we go. The high power 500 milliamp output is driving the Mobius and we'll check the other two just to make sure they power on, which they do. Now we should be able to rerun the test and we'll see if there's a difference. Okay, so here we go with test two. Everything should be the same except the power supply. We've just switched out the isolated power supply for the unisolated power supply. And now I'm gonna hit the standby switch and we'll turn the amp on. Okay, you hear that? Immediately we've got an audio difference. We've got a, a tone in there that, uh, that should not be in there. So let's take a look at it. And there we can see, there it is. It's one there at 430 Hertz. 850, 1.28, so there's some harmonics in there. 
So we're definitely picking up some sort of uh, some sort of noise. And the only thing we've changed is the power supply. All right, let's run a sample of that and we'll do a recording the same as we did before so that we can do a comparison of them. I'm going to go quiet for 20 seconds while we make the recording. Here we go. Okay, I'm going to save those and then we'll get to the next test. Okay, so we've tested the first pedal board with both isolated and unisolated power supplies. Um, and it does look like we've seen an issue, so we'll go analyze that in a minute. Um, but maybe the issue was just with that one pedal board. So let's try it with, that, with our second pedal board and we'll do the same test. This pedal board has a 529 already installed underneath it, so it's, it's the same test. So we're testing with the isolated power supply. So let's turn the battery on and the unit comes up. Okay, test number three, pedal board two with the isolated power supply. I'll save those and then we'll do test number four. Okay, here's test number four. This is pedal board two and I've just switched out the 529, the isolated power supply for the AGP tech, which is the unisolated power supply. I have the 500 milliamp output, which is the high power output going to the Eventide. And I'm using a polarity reversal adapter to do that because the H9 needs a polarity reversal. Um, the rest are being powered from the standard 100 milliamp outs. Apart from that, everything is exactly the same as we had with the, uh, with the isolated power supply. I've just switched the power supplies. Okay, so this is uh, pedal board two now with the unisolated power supply. So let's turn the amp on. Oh boy. Okay, that's really bad. That's way worse than we had before. Okay, let's do the um, let's do the frequency analysis real quick. Oh yeah, look at that. Okay, 123 hertz. We have a really big peak uh, there. 246. So that's the harmonic, um, and that's all the way across. So that's pretty bad. Okay, let's do the um, let's do the recording. So this is uh, test number four. This is pedal board two with the unisolated power supply. Okay, let's save that and then we'll compare the four and see what we can find out. Okay, so let's take a look at these uh, frequency response graphs and see if we can figure out what's going on. So this first one is pedal board one. So this is the small pedal board with the Strymon and a couple of small effects. And this is with the isolated power supply. So we can see we have a little peak here. This is gonna be at 120 Hertz or so. Yep, there we go. So um, that's that's common mode noise. So that's just on the AC supply. So that's just being picked up by the amp. So that, that will always be there whether you have anything plugged into it or not, even with no effects. So we don't have to worry about that too much. 
and then the rest of it is just general noise that's um, coming from the components and the environment. Now let's compare that to the second one, which is the same pedal board under the same circumstances, same amp, same signal level, but with the unisolated power supply. All right, so you can see we still have the um, we still have the AC noise here. So again, this is just being picked up by the amp. This is always going to be there. And most of the rest of it looks the same. But look at that peak right there at 430 hertz or so. And then this one here, 860. So that's the first harmonic, the second harmonic. Um, and then all these here, these harmonics from that there. Now that is the classic issue with digital pedals and uh, non-isolated power supplies. That's digital noise getting into the audio through the power supply. And we're going to explain how that works here in just a little while. Okay, so here's uh, test number three. So this is our second pedal board. So this is the larger pedal board with the, um, with the Eventide H9, the mixing link, and a couple of other analog pedals. Um, we, the overall signal level is higher on this because the mixing link is a preamp and it has the has the signal level boosted over um, what we had with the uh, the simpler pedal board. Um, so you'll see the overall signal level is is higher. Now let's look at the unisolated version, and there you can see again we have the same thing as we had with the uh, with the last pedal board. Is that on the whole? The signal level on average is about the same, but then we have these huge peaks. Um, so we have one here, 123 hertz, this one 240, so that's your second harmonic, um, and then we have a bunch of others here at various points. It's very similar, slightly worse in fact, but very similar footprint to what we had with the previous one. And this is a, a classic issue with unisolated power supplies and digital noise. So let's go to the whiteboard and figure out what it is exactly is happening and why it is that using an isolated power supply fixes it. Okay, here's a block diagram representation of the setup that we just had. And before we go through the explanation of what happened, I just wanted to point out that all of the devices that we had in our demos, um, all typical devices that we would normally use. I didn't use anything especially unusual. They're all common effects pedals that we use, common power supplies, uh, a standard tube amp that we would expect to use. There's nothing in here that's particularly uh, bad. There's nothing that was faulty. There's nothing that's poorly designed. All of these things were functioning the way that we would normally expect. It's just this particular combination of things that causes this problem. And once you understand how it works, you'll be able to figure out why it is that in this case an isolated power supply fix, fixes it. In most cases you will find that an isolated power supply will fix it. And in some cases you won't even come across the issue and we'll, um, we'll point this out here and you'll figure out what's going on. Okay, so here's what we had. So we had a guitar going into uh, some effects pedals, combination of digital and analog. So this is our digital effects pedal here. This is our analog effects pedal. Then we came out into the amplifier and then we had a power supply powering those. Now inside a digital device um, are switching components. Now you imagine that um, when you turn off and on an amplifier or sometimes when you turn on and off an effects pedal and even when you turn on and off devices that aren't actually directly in the signal chain, like uh, refrigerators, air conditioning systems, lighting systems, you sometimes hear a little pop in the audio. That's because emissions occur when those switching actions take place. Now these can be what we call conducted emissions, which means that they actually pass along, they're conducted, along the cables and along the traces in the PCB and through the components they're actually conducted between them. And then we have radiated emissions and those are emissions that actually pass out of the device and out into the air and then get picked up um, by the receiving device. 
if you imagine that you were to switch on and off your amplifier or to step on and off the switch on an effects pedal really fast, let's say 8,000 times a second, you might be doing something that's very similar to what's happening inside any of these digital devices. That is, we have uh, processors in there, we have digital switching devices, and they are switching on and off extremely fast. Sometimes they're switching on and off in the megahertz, gigahertz range, so thousands or millions of times a second, trillions of times per second. And in those cases, they're way out of the audio signal band. So they're certainly the emissions are certainly there, and we have to worry about them for other reasons but they're not in the audio signal path which is you know 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz so if it's above 20 kilohertz you're not going to hear it in an audio path so we don't have to worry about it in the same way but if these devices are switching on and off somewhere in the audio signal path or there are harmonics or other things that are occurring that are causing those switching events to occur in the audio path they can pass in to the audio path in the device so this switch here in the CPU can be switching on and off really fast and that can get radiated into the signal here um, or can get conducted into the signal here. So why is it that we don't hear that normally if I've got an isolated power supply or if I just have this pedal plugged in by itself, why don't I hear that coming out of here? Well the reason for that is that when the product is being developed um, a lot of the times you're going to know what's going to occur and you're going to pick that up first um, or when you're testing it you're going to find that and so you're going to filter it out you're going to stick a new component in here that says okay I've got say my 8 kilohertz tone that's getting conducted or radiated into my signal so I'm going to stick a filter block in here and I'm going to remove it so that by the time the signal gets out of here that noise that's being generated here has been removed before it ever gets into the signal path so you don't hear it. Now in some circumstances I can also filter back on this side as well and I may be able to put another filter in this side that stops it passing out this way as well but sometimes that's really tricky and sometimes you find that when you're routing uh, signals and figuring out component placement and those kind of things inside these devices I'm going to make sure that any of those noise generating devices are as far away from my audio signal as I possibly can I'm going to isolate those as best I can and sometimes that means they're going to get moved up nearer to the um, power supply so it's not always practical um, to filter those out on this, on this side so quite often that doesn't happen normally that's of no problem at all because it's just going out through the power cable and then it's kind of dissipating in the power supply or disappearing out down the AC cable out into the street and no one's any the wiser however if I have an unisolated power supply where I have common grounds what can happen is this noise that's being generated here is going to pass up through the PC PSU components through the power supply of that digital device and then it's going to pass out here down the ground of this cable and because these grounds are connected in a non isolated power supply it's going to pass down here and it's going to pass all the way through the power supply and then it's going to come out here and then it's going to end up in this device here now this device is an analog device it doesn't have uh, doesn't need any digital filtering there's there's uh, there's no digital noise inside that device it doesn't know anything about what it's going to be connected to it has no idea that this in our example 8 kilohertz tone is going to be passing down here so it has no filtering in here so this 8 kilohertz tone bounces down here ends up in the audio path comes out into the amplifier and this is what we hear the reason that we didn't hear the noise with the isolated power supply is that this link here doesn't exist. So any noise that passes out on the power supply side here just ends up stopping here. It doesn't go any further. Um, but if you have a non-isolated power supply where they're connected then it makes its way all around. 
And then the same is true if we add, uh, if we add other pedals here um, and those devices um, can also pick up that noise. And of course, if we have other pedals that are also generating uh, more noise, so I have more digital pedals on here and more of them are putting on here, those all end up on this line. So the more digital pedals I add with the, um, that are generating noise out onto the power line, um, the more that gets added onto here and then the more these guys pick it up and then pass it off into the, um, pass it off into the audio signal. So that is the reason that a isolated power supply does not suffer from that particular issue. Now, there's nothing to say that um, there are not other uh, noise issues that can occur. Um, so there are other things associated with noise created by pedals and by amplifiers and by power supplies themselves. Um, and I'll, I'm going to see if I can't cover some of those in some uh, in some different videos. We'll do some other videos where we talk about other sources sources of noise and uh, and ways that we might be able to resolve them. But in this particular case, this is a very common issue um, with anything digital. Now, bear in mind, it doesn't have to be a digital effects pedal in the same way as um, as we used it in our demo. So we used fully digital effects pedals but it only needs to be anything that has any sort of digital clock inside it. So this can be things that you wouldn't necessarily think of as, as digital pedals. So uh, drum machines, loopers, um, any sort of uh, digital recording device that you have in there. Um, digital tuners could, uh, could, could cause the same issue. Um, pretty much anything that has those in there. There are also some pedals that are analog pedals, but they also have some sort of digital device in. Um, ones that use soft touch switching, for example, are becoming increasingly common. Even though they're analog pedals, they have soft touch switching in those, and those are normally digital. So they could have these sorts of devices in them, even if they're not what you would think of as a digital pedal. So they could all potentially cause that type of issue. So really the only easy way to resolve that is just to use an isolated power supply. So does that mean that um, isolated power supplies are the only things that are relevant and I should never use a daisy chained or unisolated power supply? Not at all. Um, what we're trying to, uh, to deal with here is a very specific case where we have digital noise that's being uh, passed out onto, the, um, out onto the, the power line here. If I don't have any of these devices, then I'm not going to come across that issue, so I don't need it. So if I just have a few analog pedals and they're truly all analog and there's nothing digital in there and I don't have any digital tuners or any loopers or anything else with, uh, with digital components in there, then I'm not going to suffer from this issue and then I can happily daisy chain them together and I'm not going to have, uh, I'm not going to have this problem. There are potentially some other problems which, um, which I'll cover in some other videos, but this specific one that we dealt with here you're not going to see it. So you could happily use daisy chain pedals in that case. Um, sometimes you may have digital pedals that don't do this. Um, either they have uh, some sort of filtering on the power supply or they're just not putting any um, any digital noise into uh, the audio into the audio band so you don't hear it. Um, in those cases you'll find that um, that a daisy chain power supply will also work just fine. The trouble with that is you don't really know until you try it, unless you do some really extensive research on the products that you're using to find out what they, um, whether they might have this issue. Um, you, you're just not going to know. So you're going to have to try it and see if it works. And then if it doesn't work and you get this digital noise, then switch to an isolated power supply. The other thing you can do is just power these pedals from a different power supply. So if you have a bunch of analog pedals and then you just have one digital device, um, that you can power that digital device from a separate power supply. Use the wall wart that came with it or use it on its own power supply just alone and then put all the others on a second power supply and that will resolve that issue. That has some other complexities. You have to have two power supplies and then two power sources and that kind of stuff, but it is a way to resolve the problem. Okay, we're done, finally. Um, thanks for sticking with me. If you're still here, that was a bit of a long one. 
Um, if you have any questions about any of the mission engineering products that you saw in this video, you can uh, find mission engineering on the web at missionengineering.com. If you have any questions for customer service, you can reach them at info at missionengineering.com. Or if you need to reach me, my direct email address is james at missionengineering.com. Thanks for watching. See you again next time.